We've had astronauts training here for some time. These are the lava beds of the Deschutes National Forest, the terrain chosen as most like the surface of the moon. This is our objective, the moon itself. These pictures were sent back by Lunar Orbiter, actual photographs of the moon's surface. Here you see a test firing of the first stage engines of Apollo Saturn V. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust. Here's Apollo Saturn V. Taller than the Statue of Liberty. This will be the first time that a space vehicle this size has been launched and tested as a complete unit. We'll have to have a gigantic rocket to carry us to the moon. I think that's about it, Corey. Now, in brief, a manned space flight to the moon, exploration of the lunar surface, and the safe return of the astronauts to the Earth. Now, if this launch is successful, manned launches will soon follow. Quite a giant step the most difficult we've ever been faced with. The peaceful exploration of space will be a vital factor in the work of the Forest Service, Corey. Space photography alone will be invaluable in giving us a quick determination of damage done by fire, flood, wind, earthquake. And you know the list of wood byproducts used in the space program is endless, even to some solid rocket propellants. And that's what I want from you, a first-hand report of the performance of all wood byproducts. Yes, sir. And secondly, you'll be involved in the testing of a new parachute that's been worked on by our scientists at Missoula. And if it's as good as they say it is, it will soon be used in the land recovery of future space vehicles after re-entry. Any questions, Corey? Except the obvious one. When do we leave? <laughs> First, you've got a couple of days of extensive briefing. Then you'll be on your way. I'm going back to the Space Center tonight. You let me know what flights will be on, and I'll meet you at the airport. Goodbye, Lassie. See you in Florida? <laughs> Hello, Dan. Is the pass ready for Mr. Stewart? Yes, sir, Mr. Redman. I understand you and Captain Chuck Conway are pretty good friends. 
He was a smoke jumper on my ranger district a few years back. We were all very proud of him when we went into astronaut training. Well, he's a fine young man. You'll be working with him very closely here, especially on those parachute tests. I understand that. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Oh, Captain Conroy called and said he'd leave a message for you at the headquarters building. Good. Say, you didn't mention a badge for the collie. <laughs> she doesn't need one, Dan. VIP. <laughs> OK. Good to see you. Good to see you. You've come a long way from smoke jumping. Hey, what's the matter, Lassie? Well, don't you recognize me in this getup? It's true, you do. Good girl, yeah. Well, Corey, you and Chuck will be working over at the launch complex most of the time, so I won't get to see much of you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll drop your luggage off. Chuck's Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes, sir, you're looking great. Feel great. Strong, healthy, tip-top shape. You know, Lassie, I think he's trying to tell me something. Come on. I have to check in with the doc, get out of this rig, and then we can give it a go. That's one of our boys now. Kite flying, part of our survival training. You'll be next. I thought you were my buddy. Oh, I am. That's why I want you to share in the fun that we dedicated astronauts enjoy. But I'm not an astronaut. You never can tell. The millions will be traveling in space before long. Come on. trip really necessary? Well, as the young generation would say, it's Thrillsville. Now, look. I'll give the signal. The boat takes off. And Corey Stewart goes up, 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 and away. If this is kite flying, it isn't the way Ben Franklin did it. Progress, my friend. The times have changed. Take it away!
Didn't I tell you? A thrill a minute out there. What else do you fellas do for laughs? I gotta admit it beats the Ferris wheel. Come on. What's wrong, Chuck? That door can be dangerous. Lassie, come here! I'm sorry, girl. Atlas is no playmate for you. He was a guard dog here in the Space Center. His master died a week ago. Atlas has been running wild ever since. One man dog, eh? Exactly. Trying to obey just that one man. That dog is hurt. He's limping. Anyone tried to catch him? Sure. Boys from Fish and Wildlife have even put food out to try to lure him in. He won't touch it. He's been trained to accept food only from one master. It's hard to understand, isn't it, girl? She knows he's been hurt. She doesn't know how deep the hurt goes. That's the sad part. And there's nothing can be done about it as long as he's out there running wild. Even if he is caught, there's no guarantee he can be retrained. Some of them never make it. What happens then? Yeah, it's too bad, but there's only one answer. They have to be destroyed. Sorry, girl. Nothing you can do to help. The shoots we use carry a lot more than men. Instruments, command modules, you name it. Huh. Those men are packing one of our shoots right now. That table is 180 feet long. Of course, future space ventures are going to need better and stronger shoots. That's why we're so interested in that new one that your boys at Missoula have been working on. Uh, last reports I had on is doing the first of the week. Good. We'll do the lab analysis first. The actual high altitude drop will be safe for the last thing. You've probably got plans to drop me out with it. That's a good <laughs> idea. Come on. I'll show you some of the uh, testing rooms. Stay here, Lassie. Saturn 5, 
this dream in less than 10 years. Think of what the next 10 will bring. Come on, I'll show you around. I'm not going to give up without a fight. Easy.
didn't mind our bringing him here, Paul. The nearest vet's at Cocoa Beach. I'm glad you did, Chuck. You know how I feel about animals. We've gotten the okay for the use of this dispensary. Everything I need is right here. Paul's one of our top biochemists. He's done a lot of work with chemotherapy and animal infection. You think you can help him, Doc? I think so. He's suffering from malnutrition primarily, and a paw infection. Somehow, we've got to get him to eat. You fellas uh, going to make this dog your personal project? Yep. But we're going to need your help. Might take a lot of time and patience. Love and affection. That's more important to a dog like this than food. Have to get his trust, break all of his old habits and training, and start all over again. <laughs> I'm willing to try. We'll start out by making a rack. Rack? Well, that's a long pole to push a sterile dish in with food on it so it doesn't have any human scent in it. Lassie here. I think Atlas might just make it. At least now it's a beginning. <laughs> <laughs> 